Hi, my name is Adam Whitmer. I'm the founder and host here at ComplianceCohort.com. This compliance clip is going to talk about the CFPB proposal on small business data collection and reporting. Now, this was actually released on September 1st of 2020 when the CFPB issued a notice of propo proposed rulemaking to implement the provisions of the Dodd-Frank Act on small business lending data collection and reporting requirements. Now, this proposed rule actually goes back a decade to the Dodd-Frank Act. So we've known this has been coming for some time. If you've seen many of my programs, you know that I've been talking about this for some time. This is actually going to be a very significant change for lenders, specifically commercial lenders, because we're now going to have this rule that is very much hummed alike. Now, what it does is it, it, it is proposing to amend Regulation B, because that's what the Dodd-Frank Act requires, to have this new subpart B in Regulation B that talks about small business lending, data collection, and reporting. And it really is similar to Humda. In fact, the Humda framework that they developed over the last decade, which was also a requirement of the Dodd-Frank Act, has really become this backbone, this, this backdrop is what they call it, a Humda backdrop. It's a foundation that they're building this small business lending data collection and reporting on top of. So it's substantially similar to Humda. It's different, it's completely different, but it is substantially similar. So if you have experience in Humda, you're gonna understand a lot of what's going on in this small business lending data collection and reporting. Now, it is different and in fact, it's so different that some lenders who are exempt from Humda and don't report Humda are going to have to report this new requirement under Regulation B under Subpart B. So this is a proposal. It's not a final rule. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time in this compliance clip. In fact, uh, we took a pretty deep dive into the proposal in our fall 2021 quarterly compliance update. So if you want to learn everything about this topic and learn um, more details, we spent a full 45 minutes talking about this in our fall 2021 quarterly compliance update. But I did want to bring this up because the comment period is still open for 90 days after publication of the Federal Register, which it really works out to uh, January 6th of 2022. So there's plenty of time for you to submit comments on this, especially if you're one of those financial institutions who may be subject to reporting based on the number of small business loans that you do. Now, let's talk briefly about what's included in this proposal. And I, what I've done is I've broken this down into a few main topics that we've, basically this is how I approached it in our fall 2021 quarterly compliance update. So there's main parts to the proposal. They give a background uh, explaining everything, but then they go into a number of things. They talk about covered financial institutions which lenders are subject to this rule. Now, of course, we're talking about commercial lenders. So if you don't do any commercial loans, then you're not going to be subject to this data collection and reporting rule. However, if you do commercial loans, this could apply to you. And originally when they talked about issuing this uh, a year ago, back in the fall of 2020, they talked about potential thresholds of anywhere from 100 small business loans or maybe 50 or maybe 25. Now, I'm telling you, you're not going to like what they're proposing, so it's definitely worth taking a deep dive into the rules to see what they're proposing and taking a look at potentially submitting a comment because <laughs> there could be changes. And they, they talk about how comments received really do drive what they're doing, and they haven't received a lot of comments that are unfavorable. There's been a lot of support for this rule, so it's very important that you consider commenting. Moving on, uh, they also talk about what is a covered application, what's a covered transaction. So who, who are we going to know we're going to have to report on if we are a reporter? And what transactions do we actually report? So much like Humda, you're going to have your uh, originated loans, but you also have some other originated loans like approved, not accepted, or withdrawn, uh, denied, those types of things. Also, there are proposed requirements to collect and report data. So they've got some specifics on how to do that. They've actually got uh, the data fields that are, again, somewhat similar to Humda, where they use the Humda backdrop. So a lot of the same fields Humda reporters are used to are now going to be in this Reg B reporting under subpart B of Regulation B. 
There's also provisions regarding availability and publication of data, much like Humda. You have to make this data available to the public and the CFPB is proposing an easy way to do that. There's a firewall requirement where, there, where you have to keep this data separate from certain individuals in your organization. So there's some challenges there. And then of course there's record keeping and compliance and effective dates. Now when they talk about effective dates, we're looking out a little bit into the future. So this isn't gonna happen it, you're gonna ha not going to be subject to report this in 2022, obviously, but it is going to be coming up at some point. So there's a lot in this rule. If you're not familiar with this, take a look at this. This is going to affect a lot of financial institutions. In fact, a lot of community banks and even credit unions who lend to small businesses are going to be affected by this Humda-like rule. So it's very important that you pay attention now and start to understand how this might affect your organization and consider submitting a comment because this really could have an effect on the final rule and whether or not this does apply to your organization. Again, if you want to take a deep dive into this, we have a 45 minute video as part two of our fall 2021 quarterly compliance update. And the full program runs over two hours long, but we spend 45 minutes just talking about this proposal and what they are proposing to do and a lot of the logistics and who this would apply to and how this would look. So if you want to deep dive, that's available to you. Um, but I want to give this overview because this is going to be a big change in a lot of organizations. That's all I have for this compliance clip. If you're new to the compliance cohort, uh, make sure you check out our site. We do have a free membership that is absolutely free. It's our basic membership where we offer free compliance clips just like this. We have a bunch of training videos. We've been doing this for a number of years. So there's a bunch of training videos on various topics out there just like this available for free. We also have a number of articles and resources and discounts. We do giveaways a lot at the compliance cohort on our training programs. And of course we have training programs available in our store. We'd love to have you as a free basic member. If you're an existing member, thank you so much for being a member and for watching our videos. We do appreciate it because you're the reason we do what we do. That's all I have at this time. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a wonderful day.